some uh, exciting uh, developments Friday night at our house of prayer. Uh, as Mike Woo! would say, we cut the umbilical cord and put all the sheet music away and said, okay, Lord, here we are. What's on your heart? And um, our musicians amongst us had um, <coughs> semi-songs, <laughs> some chords, some thoughts, some beginnings of what I would call a new song that they brought forth, and the music was birthed, and it was born, and it was it was glorious. It was wonderful, and I was talking to Jamie, I feel like, whew, I feel free. Like, when I'm singing, I worry about singing out of tune, because everybody knows the song, and I'm worried about messing the words up, but just don't put all that aside, you know? And I was praying and telling the Lord, oh, make me a better singer. I'm not that good of a singer. And God said, I don't want singers. I want worshipers. Yeah. So I encourage you all, you to God. It may not be singing. That's right. It may not be, you know, the words on the screen that may not always be there, hint, hint. You know, I mean, it, we get so used to worship being singing songs together. Well, each of us have our own way to worship, and so I encourage you to seek God. I mean, I, I can't help but think of um, Pam's daughter, Courtney, who used to draw. You know, that was her worship. That was her gift. That was her connection to the Spirit. You know, and, and those that dance with the flags or, you know, or just run the aisle or go take a lap. I mean, whatever it is that, exactly. that, that connects you, feel exactly. free to worship. God wants to be worshipped. And that doesn't look the same for everybody. And so we're figuring out what that means up here. So, you know, praise the Lord. Yeah. And there have been dreams. Um, Sheila had a dream. Um, and then I had a dream Friday night that I was pregnant. Well, anybody who knows my situation, that's not possible. <laughs> Missing just in this area. 
is how God is going to cover the earth with his glory. He will not destroy the earth like he did with the flood, but his glory will cover the earth just like the flood did. And we are the headwaters of that river, right? And um, watch out. Um, after service last Wednesday, I told Mike that during the prayer even, the beginning of the service where we even worshipped, I had a vision of floating on water. So there's been all this talk about the river, and so water is really in my mind. And, and I was floating, and you know how when you're floating on water, you feel weightless? You feel at peace, your joints don't ache, you're, you're bioed up, and just floating, peace. That's the most wonderful feeling. And I saw bubbles, you know. And God said, that's what your troubles are. That's what your worries are. That's what the greatest, hor most horrible things on this earth are. They're bubbles to me. Is anybody intimidated by a bubble? Is anybody worried or troubled by a bubble? <laughs> They're bubbles to God. We have to have our faith and our hope in him and learn to rest. If you tense, if you fight, you're sinking. You can't float. Just complete. Let it go and relax. And that's the position that we have our most glorious worker because it's all him. It's all him. So, praise the Lord. Anybody else want to share this? shirts and hats and you'll go crazy over the games and, and everything else but are we sold out enough to that to say that we're Jesus freaks because when it comes down to it mm -hmm. and they walk up to you and say choose mm -hmm. choose mm -hmm. and there's the true moment when you're going to decide what was in your heart before because it should just come out just like I just said yes mm -hmm. and my name is Jesus mm -hmm. I am, I am, I'm after Jesus and I know that Jesus has been after me since the day I was born and uh, even before that, that's what the Bible says. But um, I just hope that the, the truth, that, that, that the words and everything, not just from the pulpit, from, from this congregation, this body of people, that the words that are coming forth that we all have in here, and I hope that the kids are hearing this too, so that they're not yes. freaked out by it. They're not um, uh, afraid of it. They're not scared of it. Right. Um, that's one thing, not to go out and look for it, but at the same time, when it shows up on my doorstep, I want to know that I'm standing on that solid ground, and it is Jesus. So just, I mean, prayer for strength and wisdom and just yes. open ears to understand. Amen. Amen.
you teach us to be worshipers? Worshipers in spirit and truth, Lord. To connect with you, Lord. That those rivers of living water would pour forth from all of your people, Lord. Bringing healing to the nations. Bringing life. And wherever that river flows, Lord, it brings life. And that more abundantly, Lord. And we speak to the dry places, Lord. We speak to the diseases. redemption. We speak salvation. We speak deliverance, Lord. In your name and for your glory, Jesus. Lord, that we cast our cares, Lord. The little bubbles, Lord, we cast our cares aside and we look to you, Lord. And we say that you are good. You are good, Lord. That you are full of mercy and gracious, Lord. That we trust you, Lord. Trust you, Lord. And our hope is in you. Oh, Lord, that your name is a high tower, a strong tower, a place of refuge and strength, Lord. And we hide ourselves in you, Lord, and we trust. And when we speak your word, that it brings life. Lord, we trust in you this day. In Jesus' name. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you, Lord? I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in the new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Thank you, Lord. John and Don, you two want to take the offering this morning, please? <laughs> Don, would you ask the blessing this morning, please?
guys, I'll tell you what. I think we'll do it again next month. How, what do you Amen. think, worship team? Yes. Those that came and participated, Pastor and, and Sally and, and, uh, and I see said Sheila and Jamie and John and I think there was others. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The Holy Ghost was here and uh, manna was just dropping all over the place and everyone was being used. It doesn't matter who or where or where we're at. The Holy Ghost is just moving in this place and, and uh, come next month, the second Friday night of the month, uh, we're going to do this again. Just enter into what and let the Lord release whatever he wants and whom he wills. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're after a fresh word from the Lord. Um, it was written in Hebrews 10, 9 and 10, where the Lord uh, let go of the first to bring the second. Okay? We got to let go of the first, what's been, and so we can come into the second. Uh, darkness comes before light. You see it seven times in, the, in, in Genesis. It was dark and then daylight. Dark and daylight. There's always darkness before the light. So if you're in the dark times right now, if you're struggling through things, let it be a uh, springboard of understanding that it's because you're going through a transition that comes in that next layer of light, okay? Yeah. All right, go for it, Zach.
There are new songs being birthed in this place. The nine months of pregnancy has finished and the birthing is now taking place. Lord, fill this room up, our lives up, our homes up with a new song. A fresh revelation from your throne room, Lord. We love what you've done yesterday and the days and past. And we seek your face for the newness. You said your mercies are new every morning. We pray and seek you and you alone. The doctrines and the beliefs and the traditions of days gone by are set aside because we need you alone. In you alone, Lord. In you alone. Fill our mouths with new songs, Lord. Fire you, 
eternity. talking about this for three, four weeks, and we just can't shake it. Just can't shake it. Can't shake it. You know why? Because these are the days of Elijah declaring the real word, the real word. And these are the days of your servant, Moses.
Downstairs. Thank you all for being here today. Praise the Lord. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you all did that last song. Praise the Lord. They were all great, but that one just made my message. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm always looking for that. Praise God. I just, everything in that, that last song, all of them for that matter, but especially that last song, are biblical truths. Talking about declaring the word, talking about the trumpet sound. Amen. And it, it's, it's all in this Bible. Praise the Lord. And I, I, I said Wednesday night I, I was teaching on revival, and I'm going to do that again today, but in a little bit different way than what we normally think of. But that song is talking about revival. That song is talking about genuine God-sent revival, not something that we manufacture, not something that we try to instigate or initiate, but something that comes from God himself. Everything about that is supernatural. And God knows this world needs revival. But you know what gets revived is the spirit man. You don't revive those that have no spirit. In other words, you can't resurrect a no body. I mean, you got to have a body to resurrect. Amen. you got to have something there to bring to life or to quicken, make it more alive or more aware. And that's what God does in this last day. He makes us alive so that we can touch those that are dead in their trespasses and sins, those who are cut off from God, and draw them to him. That nobody comes to God except by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is what you have in you. Know ye not that ye have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. Praise the Lord. You're the temple of God. Amen. So people need to be drawn to God. The only way they can be drawn is by his Spirit. And the way his spirit moves is through people. Amen. And the way that happens, 
the way real genuine revival takes place is people start declaring. I, I challenge you to start calling out the names of people that you are concerned about whether they're saved or not saved, whether, whether, uh, whatever the situation might be, people that you've prayed for in the past. Look, we know that it's the will of God. We need to stop this stuff of coming to God and begging to get God to do something when we need to be coming to God and thanking Him for what He's already done. Thank Him for your children saved, being saved. Thank you for your loved ones, friends, family, uh, amen, for being saved. Even if they're not saved today, it's the will of God. His word tells us that you and your house shall be saved. Amen. Now, that house is as big as you want to make it. Yeah. It's, your, it's, you know, your cousins, your, 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 your children, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, parents, grandparents, whatever. we got to quit looking. You know, there's, a, there's an old truth that no religion in the world has ever dealt with the Spirit. None. No religion deals with the spirit. Religion always deals with the flesh. It deals with the senses. That's why Christianity is unique. It is not a religion. It's a relationship with God. It's a fellowship. It's more than that. It's a blood relationship with God Almighty. We are children of God. It's not sensual. It's not by the senses that we know any of this stuff. It's by the spirit. So we need to start calling out from the Spirit, amen, for people to be saved, for people to be delivered. These people in, in Iraq and, and other places in the Middle East, Israel, we need to start declaring what God has already said about it. His enemies are our enemies. And by the way, our enemies are His enemies. Amen? If, if Abraham's uh, friends were friends of God, in other words, if whoever you bless, I'll bless, or whoever blesses you, I'll bless, and whoever curses you, I'll curse. That still works for New Jerusalem, folks. I mean, it still works for us. We're not out to curse anybody, but they put the curse on themselves. When they reject God, the only Savior, amen, they have placed themselves under the curse. The Scripture tells us that. We've been redeemed from the curse because we are in fellowship with God Himself. Brothers, heirs, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 We're, 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 we're right there. Hallelujah. And we need to start doing what Christians should be doing instead of playing with religion. And I mean, we get trapped. I'm not, this is not a rebuke. I'm just saying we get snared. The devil operates in religion. If you don't believe that, look at what, just what Don was talking about. You pick any religion you want. Christianity, quote, unquote. I'm not talking about the truth of Christianity, but I'm talking about the religious Christianity has murdered its thousands and tens of thousands, the same as Islam has, the same as Hindus and, and Sikhs and every other general uh, religion that you can think of, is violent. It's bloodthirsty. Because they're more interested in getting people to obey them and their belief system than they are about connecting people with God. Praise the Lord. We want revival. Amen. We want God, and that means God comes alive. God comes alive in us, and that's what God wants more than anything else. That's why he came to us in the first place, to give us life, and that more abundantly. And his, his, his purpose and his plan has not changed, not one scintilla. Amen. So let's start off this morning. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. I want to read two scriptures just to begin with here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8. And then 2 Timothy 3.16. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, everything works the same as far as God's concerned. And again, what Don said this morning is so absolutely true. There has been a spiritual battle taking place for eons. But it's spilling over into this realm. Now, if that can happen, then why can't the same thing happen when we take words which are natural 
and begin to declare into the supernatural, because we are spirit beings, we have the ability to bring that into this dimension. It's happening right now on a, on a demonic scale, and it, it is the plan and the purpose of God for His church to do the very same thing, to speak to things that are not as though they are and they become. We're just simply declaring what God, but we got to do it in agreement with the Word of God. When we take the Word of God and declare and speak the way God does, that has to manifest. It has to manifest. Words are the most powerful things in the world. I mean, in terms of inanimate things. Especially coming from the mouth of someone with authority. And God has given us dominion and authority over everything on this planet. Yes. Why? Because we have the ability to pull heaven to earth. We have the ability to whatever is in heaven to be manifest on earth. Yes. I mean, think about it. That's what healing is. That's what salvation is. That's what every fundamental thing about the Bible is. It's bringing that perfect will of God, which is settled in heaven, to earth. Yes. We do it all the time without even knowing it. So we ought to you know, kind of clue into this and start actually doing it with a conscious decision, amen, and a, with a spiritual imperative, amen, and, a, and, a, uh, and aim for the fulfillment of God's purposes on earth. Yes. That's being in sync with God. Nothing, you can't fail when you do that. Right. I mean, you're enforcing God's law. Yes. Amen. So then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, whether you know it or not, we are smack dab in the middle of that scripture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, historically, but literally. Yes. As Christians, yes. we are in that scripture. We are who God is talking about. Not just talking about Jesus but us, the body. Amen? Yeah. All right, look at uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Yeah. Amen? Amen. The, he says here that the the wicked are consumed, in, in Thessalonians, with the spirit of his mouth. Right? 2 Timothy tells us what the spirit of his mouth is. Paul tells us what the breath of God is. All scripture is God breathed. Yes. It's the word of God spoken in season. It's what we were talking about Friday night. And when that word of God is spoken in season, it comes with instruction. Yes. Yes. It comes with reproof and instruction in righteousness or declaring who you are. Yes. It comes to, to enliven you, to make you more aware, yes. to, in, to attune you with God himself. Yes. Spirit. It doesn't happen. It's not the flesh. It's the spirit. And you wonder, okay, well, then why, why what's, Mike, what's the deal with Mike and, you know, this new song? That's what he's doing. That's what he's endeavoring to do. You know, in our human way, we've we, we, we got to find the new thing God's doing, but we can't do it intellectually. So we let loose of the thing that we're holding on to for the new thing that God has for us. And it's awkward. It's It's uncomfortable. Because we're not in control. Right. Praise the Lord. But those that are afraid to let go never go anywhere. Right. They stay right where they're at. They stay in the same thing. This is the problem with religion. Yes. Something happens, God moves, and we just want to repeat, 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 repeat. We just keep dredging up the same thing. Not that it was bad. Not that it's not good. It's just that God isn't in the past. God is new. God is always something new. He's always trying to bring us into a new relationship, a deeper relationship, a greater understanding. That's why it's called revelation. That's why it's called light. 
Amen? Amen. Every scripture is the word of God, right? Amen. And therefore, it is God-breathed. And when, if every scripture is the word of God and is God-breathed, then it begins to make war with the man of sin. How do you battle the devil? It ain't begging. It's not pleading. It's not crying. It's not weeping. It's not grieving over the past. It's open your mouth yes. and say what God says, and it will defeat the enemy. Yes. That's what he's telling us in the scripture. That's what the song is saying. That's what Elijah found out. That's what Ezekiel found out. Speak in agreement with God, and you'll raise the dead. You'll cast out demons. The devil himself will flee. Hell will freak. And Jesus will appear. You'll have a descension of God and an ascension of us. That's what this is all about. Not just, in the, not just in the rapture, but in every day of our Christian life. God wants to come down here. Amen. I'm talking about, you know, metaphorically here because God is everywhere. But I'm saying he wants to manifest in this realm. And he wants us to be lifted up, seated with him in heavenly places where we operate from the authority of the throne of God. And there's only one way to do it, and that's by speaking this word. Yes. The devil knows the word of God, yes. amen, and he knows when it's spoken from you, he cannot defeat you. Yes. He cannot overcome you. Amen? Look at Revelation chapter 1, verse 16. Now, these things are fundamental, and we all know them, but we need to put them in the context of what God is actually trying to tell us instead of it becoming some kind of a fairy tale. Let's make the reality of it uh, clear. He had in his right hand seven stars out of, the, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in strength. Two-edged sword coming out of his mouth, right? Look at Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yes. Now, in Revelation 19, 11, you see him making war against the beast with a two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Praise the Lord. Yes. That sharp two-edged sword that's going out of his mouth is the declaring and the proclamation of the word of God that goes forth. Now, I'm not denying that Jesus does that, but he's saying this is what bodies to do. This is what we are supposed to be doing. We're making war. Whether you want to be in the war or not, you're already in it. You don't have a choice. You don't get to wait until the draft comes up, amen, or you go down and sign up. You already signed up when you got born again. You are in it. Everybody, in fact, is in it, whether they want to be in it or not. You better pick up your weapon amen, and start using it, or you are simply prey for the enemy. You're just part of a body count. Yep. Come on now. And the weapons of our warfare, amen, are the word of God. Yes. Jesus is showing us that. He told us that himself all throughout the scriptures. He said, the, the, work, the, the, the things that I do, that it's not me that's doing it, it's, it's the Father that's in me. Yes. The words that I speak, they're not my words, they're the word of God. And that's what made devils tremble. That's what caused the sick to be healed. That's what caused the dead to be raised. And we can do greater works than these if we understand the principles and do what he is he told us to do. Just because we're born again, we don't have power. We have power, amen, because we have a mind that's renewed to the Word of God and we begin to declare what the Word of God says because we have authority to do that. Another reason why we have to understand our righteousness so that we're bold to declare. Yes. So we feel like we ought to be declaring this. We need to be declaring this. We have a right to be declaring this. Right. Praise the Lord. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 4. Hallelujah, Jesus. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So Jesus is making war all right. There's no question about that in Revelation chapter 19 and, and, and in other scriptures. He's making war, but it's not with literal armies. Every 
every time God breathes in and exhales, life is the result of that breathing. Amen? Look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Yeah. Now, I might add to that, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And still is. And what he breathed that brought life was God's words. The same thing that brought light that separated the, the waters from above and beneath, that created everything that ever was or ever will be. When God changed Abram to Abraham, he said, your name is no longer Abram, your name is Abraham. Yeah. He breathed supernatural power into Abraham. He breathed God life into Abraham. That's how he was able to have a child, the promised child. God's word had gone into Abraham, and his word will not come back void. If you will send it back, it comes down like the rain, if you'll send it back. And so Abraham didn't have any choice but to send it back, because every time somebody said, and by the way, what's your name? Abraham, father of many nations. He was declaring back what God had already declared over him. He was declaring the truth of God's word, amen, everywhere that he went. And it had to come to pass. Likewise with Sarah. Instead of Sarai. God breathed God life into her through his word, what he had promised. And it came to pass even though she doubted it. Even though she laughed at the very thought of it. Praise God. Ezekiel. Praise the Lord. Somebody mentioned that earlier. All week, all month, hallelujah. But think about it, the dry bones. And what does God say to him? He says, prophesy to the wind. And he says, breathe on these slain. Why? Because he had a word from God. He had the word of God in him. He had God. Amen. And when the breath of God came down into that valley... They stood up a great army. Yeah. Dead bones. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about we're, we're missing so much, church, because we see this as words on a page, as if we were picking up Webster's Dictionary or a concordance or a, you know, a, 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 just a history book of some kind. This is God breathed. This is what's in us. This is God life. Amen. Amen. God is breathing, church. If we declare his word, if we proclaim his word, an exceeding great army arises. Well, we're just so many. Hey, they were dead bones. They weren't just dead. They were dried up bones. But somebody started declaring what God had said, started breathing God life and resurrection came. You talk about revival. Yes. That's a revival. Now that is a real revival. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the kind of revival I think God wants every one of us to experience. He wants us to experience the power and the glory and the dynamo of God's spirit. But there's ways to do it. And it's by declaring his word in faith. Amen? Remember in, in the book of John, Jesus breathed on his disciples. He gave God life. They go out and they're healing the sick, they're raising the dead. They don't even have the Holy Ghost. But they had God life. Yes. Because the Word breathed into them. Yes. Caused them to function like the Word. Yes. Caused them to bring about what the Word promised. Hallelujah. In Acts chapter 2, he said there came a sound as a rushing mighty wind. It was God. It was the breath of God breathed onto 120 people, amen, who were exploded then, amen, in power. Yes. Because of God life. Yes. Yes. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. In Revelation 1, his voice was, as it were, the Bible says, a trumpet. Yes. We just heard it in the song. Praise the Lord. Yes. And Paul said, if a trumpet doesn't give a certain sound, mm -hmm. then who's going to prepare for battle? Yes. That's why we testify. Yes. That's why we prophesy. That's why we declare we're giving a certain sound. It's a call to battle. It's a spiritual call, amen, to battle. The word goes forth. God life comes out, and it's like a trumpet. It's like saying, come on. Yes. Get in it. Get involved. Yes. Praise God. People are hearing the trump of God, the trumpets of God. Yes, Everywhere around the world right now, us, we're right here, we're hearing it. We're, we're hearing a call to battle. We're just not sure what, where, how. Right. It starts just by simply pick up your weapon and fire the thing. It's like the old joke. Uh, it's a true story. In Korea, the Marines were s completely surrounded by the uh, North Koreans and Chinese. And uh, I believe it was Chesty Puller. Uh, Dan might be able to correct me. But he, he they, they, they send out a message and they say, what, what, what can we do? What can we do? You're completely cut off. We can't get to you. You can't get out. What's, what's your, your uh, sit rep, your situation report? And he says, uh, well, we got them right where we want them. No matter which way we fire, we can't help but hit them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's, that's the kind of mentality we need to have. The yes. devil, the enemies, everywhere. Yes. But our weapons, amen, they're, they're, they're without uh, uh, parallel. Praise the Lord. Right. All we got to do is speak and we're going to hit the enemy. Yes. All we got to do is declare and he's going to flee. All we got to do is say it. Sickness has to flee. Amen. Poverty has to go. Whatever it is. Yes. I mean, I challenge you. If you got, you know somebody that has a financial challenge, then start speaking to it. Yes. Everything I set my hand to prospers. If they're a believer, everything they set their hand to prospers. Yes. Amen. Amen. You got loved ones that are, you know, that you don't know if they live for God and believe God or are, are born again. Declare. Yes. Me and my house will serve the Lord. Amen? All of my seed, all of my descendants will know the Lord and, and worship Him and live for Him all the days of their lives and will be with Him forever in eternity. No more the, gee, I hope, God, please do something with this derelict. They won't listen. They won't do. No. Start t declaring. Let's go to war. Don't be timid about it. Amen? Only thing worse than some... A timid, uh, amen, soldier is one without a weapon. The timid one will hesitate. Right. And not only will he get himself killed, he'll get a bunch of other people killed. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Sometimes it's better to squeeze the trigger and miss than to sit there and wait for the first round to come to you. Right. Yeah. Amen. Just go. Go for it. Yes. Bang. Amen. We've, got, we've got automatic weapons. Amen. We've got ones that just don't stop until you stop. Pull the trigger, hold on to the trigger, and it never, you never run out of ammo. It'll just keep going and going and going, amen, until you let go. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you know that the, the, for in every trump of God, in other words, in every prophetic word, that's why testimonies are so powerful here. People miss it. Some people think, oh, God, they're going to talk again. Come on, man. You don't, you're not understanding what this is all about. Because every time people here speak, it's a prophetic word, whether you understand it or not. It doesn't have to be a quote from the Bible to be prophetic. If it agrees with the Bible, you can bet that it's prophetic. If it's coming out of the mouth of a born-again believer who has God's breath in them, who has the God's word in them, when they speak, they're speaking in agreement with God's word. They're prophesying. That's why Paul said, I would to God that you all prophesy. Why? Because it defeats the enemy. Yes. Praise God. Every time a prophetic voice goes forth, every time there's a trumpet, there is a prophetic voice. Every word that comes from the Lord, and that's you, coming out of you, the breath of God, the word of God is in you, Christ in you. 
That's why you can quote things sometimes. You don't know the scripture, but you'll say things, and then you'll go back and say, well, well that's in the Bible. Yeah. Maybe not verbatim, maybe not word for word, but the thing that you said was in the Bible. Because yeah. you do have the word of God in you, even if you don't have it in your intellect. Right. You have Christ in you. That's right. You have God life in you. And every time that word goes forth, there's a descending of the Lord and ascending of the saints. Do you, do you not get goosebumps when people say things that agree with your spirit? Amen. You know, whether you do or don't is not the issue, but you know what I'm saying is that, has, that is what we would call a descending of the Lord. All of a sudden, God has manifested. And you cannot help but feel lifted. Yeah. Ascending. It happens every time there is a prophetic word that goes forth. There's a, there's a stirring in us. There's the life of God raising us up, amen, from our carnal kind of way of being. That's what we're doing all the time in a church service. That's our whole agenda, amen, is for God to descend. Exactly. I'm speaking metaphorically here, and for us to ascend. Yes. It, it, but, and yet it's literal at the same time. Yes. Praise the Lord. With every breath, there is a catching up. Paul said, I would that you all prophesy. In other words, he said, let God breathe through you. We need trumpets of God. We need to shout with the voice of triumph. Amen? We, they were made overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The word of their testimony is what, they, is, is what the word of God says. Amen. Amen. We, we've, been, we've kept our mouths shut too long. Yes. It's time to get up and speak up. Yes. And start declaring. Right. Start claiming. Right. Yes. Start, start not just quoting the word of God or, 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 or repeating it, but start declaring it. On your job, in your home, over your bodies, over your health, over your bank book, amen, over your checkbook. Amen, come on, we're, we're losing out on so many of the precious promises of God because we're not speaking it, because we're not breathing God into that situation. there's a lifting. Amen. There's an ascending. And it shouldn't just happen once a week. There's a catching up and it's progressive into the presence of the Lord. Amen. We can be like Enoch in a lot of ways. Walk with God and are not not affected by this world, right. not touched by the things of this right. world, because we're so close to God right. that we're operating from that level, from that place where he says we're supposed to be seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, where is Jesus sit, seated? He's seated on the throne. That throne, any edict that comes out from that throne, it done deal. Yes. If it wasn't before it was spoken, once it's spoken, it is. Think about it. God even told us, whoever, you, whoever sins you forgive, I'll forgive. Yeah. Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. Come on. Whatever you loose, I'll loose. Come on. But you've got to say something yeah. in agreement with this word. And God life is released. I believe it's how the spirit of the Lord will cover the earth or the glory of the Lord, even as the waters cover the sea. We're breathing God, and God's glory is being released everywhere. Praise the Lord. Now, this catching up that I'm talking about is, is, it means that we're not left in the lower realms where Adam's dominion was, where the God of this world rules. Satan, but lifted above the earthly realm, not 
not geographically, but spiritually. Amen? That's where the battle is happening and has been happening. How about maybe this time, instead of God sending Michael, he sends us. Daniel couldn't do anything about what was going on up there except pray for somebody to come and do something for him. God has equipped us. The angels look into this. They'd like to have a piece of this. (laughs) Know you not that you will judge angels. Praise God. Above every dominion, all might and all power. Until Christ manifests in us. Our ascending is descending. Amen. Let's look at some scriptures here. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, you don't have to go to all these, uh, excuse me, Sheila, but in verse 6, verse 9, verse 11, verse 14, it all begins with God said. Then God said, and God said, right? All right, look at Genesis chapter 1. verse uh, 27 and 28. So God created man in his own image. That's big. He created man to operate the way God operates. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So he gave them dominion. He gave them authority. Right? right? right. All right, now look at uh, chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. This is the first thing God has man do after he's given him this authority. He's given him God life. He's told him he's operate like I do. And then the first thing he says is out of, every, out of the ground of the earth, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. Yes. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. So the first thing God does, amen, Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the fowl of the air, every beast of the field, but for Adam there was not found to help me for him. Now, first thing Adam does after he's been created in the image of God and God's breathed into him is start doing what God does. Right. Giraffe, rhinoceros, of course, uh, horse, pig. He starts declaring. Yeah. And whatever he called them, that's what they are. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know what they were before. We just know what they are now. Yeah. And the, why are they that now? Because that's what he told them they were. Yes. Because he said, that is what you are. Therefore, that's what you are. God didn't say... I think you missed that one a little bit. No, whatever he said, that's what it is. Because God said, that's how we operate. When you've got dominion, when you've got authority, you speak to things, and things have to obey. Even natural things. Praise God. Look at Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Now, I look this up. The literal translation of that is that nothing is impossible to the word of God. That's the literal word-for-word translation. Nothing is impossible to the word of God. Of course, because God and his word are one. In the beginning was the word. The word was the word was God. The Word became flesh. The Word is still God. And when you breathe, speak, you are releasing, not words, but God. You're releasing the Almighty God into that circumstance. You want to, you know, try to, you know, 
minimize or, or, or scrutinize and say, well, I mean, it's Jesus. It's in Jesus' name. That's what he's talking about. Christ in you. God became flesh. The Word became flesh. That same Word that became flesh now lives inside of you. God life. So it isn't so much about in Jesus' name, which is fine, we understand that, but it's every time you speak in agreement with that word, you're releasing it in Jesus' name. You're doing, you're, you're releasing the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the supreme over whatever it is you're talking to. He's greater. Greater than your lack, greater than your sickness, greater than your confusion, greater than anything and everything. And it's in you. And the way it gets out of you is by declaration. By saying. Praise the Lord. John uh, 1, 4 says, in him was life. That's the word. In him was the word. Amen? And that life, that word, has become the light of men. It's an interchangeable word. It's, an inter it's, a, it's the same thing. That word has become a revelation, a light. So faith, you know, in the sense that we think about it, in the sense that we try to relate to it, I mentioned this uh, Friday night, in the way that we use that word, is letting the word of God function through you. That's what real faith is. Amen? Faith isn't a feeling. Faith isn't an intellectual thing. Faith is allowing the Word of God function through you. Look, believing is a verb. That's why Jesus said to the guy who, who uh, you know, they come back to him and they said, well, don't trouble the master any longer. Your servant's dead. And Jesus, he didn't say, oh, come on, get, let's get some faith going here. He, the same as he told his disciples, if you got faith to seize of a mustard, you can make it. But he said, your problem is unbelief. And that's what he told that man. He said, only believe. Forget about what he said. Faith won't work in that, in that kind of an environment when everything is so negative. But he said, just believe. Only believe. Because believing is a verb. Believe is a verb. It's an action. Faith is a noun. Yes. It's, it's, it's the result of action. Faith is the result of believing. That's why Jesus said, you don't need, you don't need a lot of faith. What you need is to believe what this word says. Yes. And if you believe what this word said, faith will automatically take place yes. as a result of your action. In other words, when I declare in agreement with this word, faith has to be the result. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Best heard from my own mouth. That faith pleases God. It, you know, it's, a, it's just another way of saying my believing creates an action. Or my believing is an action, but it creates a result. And the result is faith. Amen? And wherever faith is, you have your answer. You have your manifestation, in other words. So we spend so much time trying to create faith. Faith is, a, is, a, is just the, the, the offspring, the natural result of believing. Yes. Jesus said, only believe. Forget about all the rest of the theology. Just believe. And all things are possible. To him that believes. Let's look at John chapter 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. Well, he, his word abides in us because he is the word. We are born again by the blood of the lamb, but by the word, by his word, by his promise. 
So the words of your mouth are words that abide in you and that dominate you or rule you. That's why, we, you know, we, we, we read these scriptures kind of, you know, uh, talking about the, our, test, our, our confessions, you know, at the beginning of the service. And of course, they're not literally word for word, but we made it just a little easier to say. Not just as a, you know, like saying the Lord's Prayer or something in some churches, but to get you to understand that the words that come out of your mouth are the words that, that determine your future. I'm not trying to pick on people for being negative or for saying negative things, but it drives me crazy. Well, I, 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 I really, you know, I didn't. And we get, we get paranoid to where we don't even want to talk. All of us get this way. I mean, you know, because we're afraid we're undermining our, our faith. But if you believe, you'll say what you believe. Amen? It's not, I'm not being, my wife knows me. But I, I'm not a huge, I'm not a tremendously sympathetic person. I mean, I'm not cold-hearted. I'm not, un, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not cut off from other people. It's not like I'm, in, not, have no compassion or, or don't understand. I'm the first one that's there. If she's got a problem, I'm the, I'll be there to take her to go and to do whatever, and like she would be for me but I don't listen a lot to this thing and that thing. And it's not because, and I'm not saying she's that way all the time, you know what I'm saying, but she's human. She's like all of us, ooh, man. You know, we all do things like that, myself included. But I'm not quick to say, oh, baby, you know, poor you. <laughs> and she's looking over there like, and you're riding home with me. <laughs> the Lord. But I'm only being honest. She knows that I love her. I'd do anything for her. But I'm not a, a, a real sympathetic person when people start telling me all of their problems. And I'm not saying she does this all the time. I'm just saying it. we all do it. And I can say this about myself. I rarely ever say anything. I may be, oh, oh. I don't say anything, but oh, baby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, I don't, I don't. And it isn't because I'm such a wonderful person that I don't complain. It's just that I know what comes out of my mouth resides here. So even though I may be having the same feelings and the same issues, I don't say, I don't talk about it. Amen. Because I don't want it. Now, when we're dealing with other people, we can't always be that way. And you know what I'm saying, people that don't have the same understanding of the scripture they, they need a little compassion they need but I mean if you look at Jesus he doesn't go he doesn't go oh you poor devil you know, what do you want that's what he says what do you want the with guy with the withered hand he says, oh you poor thing it must have been horrible going through your whole life with that just stretch out your hand to the blind guy he doesn't go oh man I can't imagine what a horrible life that must be for you he said what do you want that I might see <laughs> Open your eyes. Yeah, I mean, do you see what I'm saying? Sympathy doesn't help. I mean, I know some people want sympathy. They actually want sympathy more than they want to be healed. Yeah. But I, I'm saying we need to teach people. We need to teach our children. We need to say what we want in agreement with this word. Because you're going to get what you're saying whether you want it or not. You reinforce the enemy when you speak contrary to the word of God. Doesn't make God disown you, doesn't make but it, it keeps you from receiving everything that God wants for you. And it gives the enemy approaches into your life. That's why I hate hospitals. I don't go to the hospital unless I absolutely have to. And most of you know that because you've been in the hospital. You waited for me to show up. And I mean, I'll usually go. But I'm not hanging out there. I don't like, 
you know, that's just not a place I like to be. Sally was in the hospital for four days uh, last month. I was there every day, a couple times a day for about five minutes. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, I was there longer than that. She usually told me to leave. <laughs> But I, don't, I mean, I can't stand having somebody come in the room every five minutes to tell you how bad you are. Right. Or to read another report and tell you, oh, my God, you know, geez, I hope the doctor gets in here for too long. And, you know, here's, they're going to put this in the IV. And everything you hear is negative. Yes. It's depressing. Yes. Amen. So I'm not, I, don't look for me in the hospital unless, you know, I'm comatose and somebody drags me in there. I mean, you know. I understand. Sometimes you got to go, and if I had to go, I'd go. But I don't like going there as just a place to hang out and yeah. rap with somebody. Yeah. It's just not a good place. And anybody that's been in the hospital as a believer knows you fight ten times harder in there than you ever do outside of there. Yeah. Even though they're doing some good things for you. Yeah. But you're constantly hearing, unless you're fortunate enough to have a, a God-fearing Christian yeah. as a doctor, which are rare, you're not getting a whole lot of support for your faith or for your belief in what this word says. Yep. Praise the Lord. Yeah. It's God's desire, it's his plan, it's his purpose to tabernacle with us, yeah. to reveal himself in us and through us. Yes. Amen. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Without controversy, I can quote this scripture. I know it. it's one of the first ones I learned. Hallelujah. And it's a great scripture. And it's a great scripture about the Godhead. But it's not just about the Godhead. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. He was preached unto the Gentiles believed on in the world, and received up into glory. That's Jesus, obviously. Everybody would agree. Amen. So I know it speaks of the Godhead, but, but God's dealing with something that goes even beyond this. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us in the context of what we just read in 1 Timothy. And we beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And remember the glory that's going to cover the entire sea or uh, as the waters cover the sea? We beheld his glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. Amen? Now, just a cursory understanding of the Bible, you, you, one of the first things you learn is that Jesus came as the pattern son. Amen. The prototype. Mm -hmm. To show us the heart of God for his creation. Not to show us how to be perfect like Jesus was perfect, but to show us God's love yes. for what he had created. Yes. A new species. A new generation. He was the first begotten. The firstborn among many brethren. He was the forerunner. The first of a whole new species of man. A whole new creation. Yes. With God life. Yes. The word of God breathed into them. So what do you suspect that maybe God wants to do with us? He wants to be seen in the world. Yes. Amen. He wants principalities, angels. He wants authorities to submit. And eventually, to be received back up into glory. Amen. That's us he's talking about as well as Jesus. You're the son of God. You're the daughter of God. You are a child of God. Yeah. So it's not just, talk, not just trying to give us an understanding of the Godhead, which it certainly is. But God is saying a whole lot more than just that. Mm -hmm. He's saying, identify yourself. Look, this is not just about finding Jesus. It's about finding you. And until we find us, we're not going to do what Jesus did. Right. And until we do what Jesus did, this thing ain't going to get wrapped up. Right. Hallelujah. 
Colossians 1, uh, verse 27. Praise the Lord. We're about done. You know what that means. We're not about that. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen? To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. The hope of glory. It's got to be revealed. It's got, he's got to be manifest. There has to be a descension and an ascension. There has to be somebody breathing God's word, God's life into this realm. It's what Jesus did. That's all Jesus was doing all the time he was here. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We've got this treasure in earthen vessels. We've got this word of God, the Jesus, in this body so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Right here. Second Corinthians chapter four, uh, verses one and two. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, now he was just talking about that, this mystery, this uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. He's talking about speaking. He's talking about declaring. He's talking about proclamation. Amen? The truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. This, he's talking about us being a dispenser, a communicator of the new covenant. Yes. God, God has breathed into us. He has deposited a treasure in us, himself, his life. And we have this ministry, we are the dispenser of that life. Yes. Yeah. And the way you dispense it is by speaking it. It's the word. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It isn't beating somebody over the head with your Bible. It's speaking into their life the word of God. It's speaking God life into them, into their situation, into their yes. circumstance. Somebody mentioned the other day, Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a vision, the people perish. Right. Where there is no vision, right? right? Well, you might be interested in knowing that the Hebrew equivalent to, that, to the Greek word for vision there, or the Greek uh, equivalent to the Hebrew word for, for uh, vision, is apocalypsis which means appearing. Without an appearing, the people perish. Without a somebody speaking God, in other words, without a dissension and an ascension, people perish. That's what religion provides. Sense religion, sensory. But we speak God, life. To people, to situations, to circumstances. Amen? And what does it do? They don't perish. They're quickened. Because God life can't do anything but bring life. Everywhere God breathes, life is the result. 
and that more abundantly. Praise the Lord. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Praise the name of the Lord. I mean, I want an apocalypsis. Hallelujah. And everybody that I come into contact is wanting the same thing. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Why? Because it didn't know him either. Shouldn't shock us, but it shouldn't either stop us from doing what Jesus did. Just because they didn't know him didn't stop him from being who he was. Just because they didn't recognize him didn't stop him from being having an appearing or a manifestation of God. You know what I'm saying? Healing, deliverance, breakthrough, revelation. Doesn't matter to me what they think or what they know about me. I can still be a revelation. Amen. I can still be part of a manifestation. But there's only one way to do it, and that's to do it the way Jesus did, by speaking only what God says. By giving them God life. This is the mystery. It's a mystery to be unveiled, the scripture says, by the spirit of his mouth. Yeah. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God breathed, two edged sword, declaration, proclamation, descending, ascending. Jesus is making war on faith, but it looks a lot like us. Yeah. And it's not against flesh and blood, but it's against the same enemy that he's been fighting. That, in fact, the same enemy that he overcame, which causes us to be more than overcomers. Let's close with this. Colossians chapter 1, verse 26 through 28. See, the mystery is getting un- being <coughs> unveiled. But if we wait around for Jesus to come again to unveil it, we're missing what this Bible is trying to teach us. We are the ones to unveil this mystery of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Even the mystery which hath been hid from the ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen. Two-edged sword. You've got it. And it makes war with that man of sin. Every time you speak, not only does it make war, it defeats. You are always victorious in Christ. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. So just like the prophets of old, we can raise dead bones to, 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 to great armies. Come on. Amen. We can cause uh, the, the low places to be high, the high places to be low. We can speak to streams in the desert. Yes. We, we, can, we, can, we can call on the name of the Lord with confidence and see life come into people that are otherwise dead yes. right. as far as God's concerned. We are the answer. Mm-hmm. We are the unveiling yeah. of God again. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. We don't want this to be the veil. Right. We want this to be the unveiling. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's why Jesus came. Mm-hmm. And the way we do it is by saying what he yes. says with all boldness. Yeah. Every obstacle, every situation that's confronting you, You need to take that thing by the horns Mm -hmm. and start talking to it based on what this word says. And it has to change. It has to change. Because if we don't do it now, amen? Remember the scripture talks about the, the, uh, if you can't handle it when the battle's small, what will happen when you get in the big one? See, God's prepping us for the big one. The big one's coming. The good news is we've got nothing to fear because we're victorious. 
Well, let's start whipping up right now. So when the big one starts, they're going to be, they're not going to be come looking for you. I mean, you'll be like the big gun. They'll be avoiding you. <laughs> they'll be going somewhere else. Amen. We have the ability, amen, to always be victorious. But it's what comes out of our mouth that's going to determine it. Amen. Not just for us, but for everybody that is depending on us. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen. Enjoy it. Love the Lord. Talk with authority, the authority that God's given you. Let God's life just spew out of you into everybody and everything around you. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God.